right, testing audio, testing movement. Alright, looks good. Hello everyone, this is Gun the Mace, aka John Hooper. I'm here with my streaming of Rebellion, Secret Game, Second Stage. When we last left off, um, Kurokawa, um, Rei, Majima, and Yui met up, and, um, Kurokawa and Majima punched some things out, and then, um, Skasa and Hitomi attacked them, and although, um, Hitomi did some major damage to them, Yui managed to injure Skasa, driving them back. And also, um, Haruna and Kotomi chased after Hatsune and, um, and Mitsuru, but, uh, Mitsuru managed to kill both Haruna and Kotomi, which means that, uh, Haruna's team is officially all out. But, Mitsuru also got pretty injured in the process from several arrows, so, he's not doing too hot. So, we'll now leave off right now, uh, we'll now pick up right here, which is where, um, Maj Majima and, uh, Kurokawa's groups have called a temporary truce team up to take down Hitomi and Skasa. I'm looking for weapons. So here we go. It had already been five hours since Masaki Kurokawa had started looking for a new weapon. He'd used up five memory chips that whole time. But though he'd gotten his hands on plenty of supplies and ammunition, he still hadn't found what he was looking for. Now he was in a plane on his sixth memory chip, with Majima and the girl taking the lead as they walked in a line. Rei, in the back of the line, looked as gloomy as she had the, has before. This ain't how it was supposed to go down. Kurokawa needed, um, needed the strength of weapons and numbers to stand a chance against the shrimp with the rapid fire pistol and that made from hell. But Rei was probably as good as useless in the fight as she was now. If Kurokawa could steal the dumb girl's submachine gun, the skills might tip more in his favor, but he doubted Majima would let him. Damn it. Such a fucking pain. Kurokawa cursed inwardly as he took out his PDA and turned on his special function to get a grasp of the situation. Death information. Day 3. 5.59 AM. Player number 10. Daisuke Ito. Die in area 8. Day 5, 1.10 p.m. Player number 3, Haruna Hosotani. Um, died in area 24. Um, day 5, 1.16 p.m. Player number 6, Kotomi Fukishi. Died in area 24. Um, casualty, six. Survivors, eight. Holy shit, we're already down to eight? If we don't hurry it up, I really am gonna have to team up with that bastard Majima to clear my condition. Hey, dumbass! We have the next point yet? Jeez, why'd you have to shout at me like that? You scared me, you know? 
Shut up, shit for brains. Well, are we there yet? Please don't yell at me like that. Don't take that guy seriously, Ogihara. The hell? You want me to break the other hand too? You've only beat me once. The fuck was that? You trying to piss me off here? Did you forget I'm the one with the gun here? <clears throat> Did you forget that killing me will dig your own grave? You wanna say that shit to my face? Hey, cut it out already, guys. Seriously, why do you keep trying to pick fights with each other? Ray, could you please stop Kurokawa? Didn't you say you were used to dealing with him? Be silent, Kurokawa. Huh? Huh? You wanna try saying like you mean it this time? Jeez, come on, just get along already. Oh look! You've reached the point! Why don't you say that sooner? Kurokawa knows the girl is pulling an inconspicuous clump of bushes. He quickly crouched down and started digging with his hands. Before long, he unnerved an aluminum can containing food and water, as well as a long wooden box. The hell? This ain't a gun, is it? I'd say no. Yeah, I think you're right. Damn it. So this one's a bust, too. Come on, let's move on to the next one. I'm starting to get worried about our memory chips. Kurokawa, Kurokawa, we'll only lend you two more. Huh? Huh? The fuck are you being stingy for? Kurokawa ignored the dirty glare he got from Majima and took points and prepared to leave. But just then, a jet black shadow darted right past him. What is it? Is something wrong? Ray crouched before the unearthed pile of dirt. This box, this shape, it's... Confused, Kurokawa looked down and ready to find she opened the box containing a katana. <laughs> so what? It's just a stupid sword. We need a gun, not this shit. <laughs> well, have you finally lost it? Kurokawa, this is my power. Huh? The fuck? Remember what you said? I need power. And I am the successor to the Makioka style. This is the greatest power I could ever hope to wield. What? You dumbass! When I said power, I was talking about guns. It's too late to be thankful for that piece of shit. 
They've got a gun! Have you lost your fucking mind? I can win. The fuck? I said I can win. As long as I get within three meters. Three meters? How brain dead you gotta be to get that close to a gun? You need at least ten meters. Then what about eight meters? Why'd you shave off five meters? Your sense of distance for dimensional or something? Besides, you're two meters too far close, too far. You finally get through your fucking skull, dumb shit? You bitch! What the fuck was that for? For talking down to me when you're weaker than me. <laughs> Fucking Lil. Kurokal quickly got up and tried to silence Ray with his pistol. But right before he could. What? He found Ray's cold sword pointing straight at his neck. Well, Kurokawa, still want to complain? Kurokawa felt all the blood drained from him. Right before him was the same vicious beast she'd been when they'd first met. You bitch. This is how you are when you get your hands on a sword? What was that? I don't understand what you said. Don't give me that shit! You're like a zombie until just now. But of course, I didn't have a sword then. What the hell does that mean? You saying you don't matter no more, you lost that maid? It's only natural I lost to her. After all, I didn't have a sword back then. Shut up about the damn sword! How simple minded are you? I'm not simple minded. Just true to my heart. Anyway, you're in no position to put me down, so I won't hand over the sword no matter what anyone says. Ray looked Kurokawa right in the eye. Unperturbed sunlight shone down on them, revealing Ray's once glazed eyes were now shining like gemstones. <laughs> you little. No matter how obsessed she was with swordsmanship, could getting their hands on a, can getting her hands on a sword really change someone so much? But once he realized it wasn't like him to be probing into his feelings. Kurokawa looked away from Ray. <laughs> Fuck it. You just do you, damn brat. But of course, I'm not your slave or anything. Ray sheathed her sword. As Kurokawa listened to that ring, he suddenly felt like laughing for some reason. The gentle early on breeze ca um, caressed the ears of Wee time and time again, 
framed by the fiery sunset. Oh, sorry, one second, hold on.
Okay, I'm back now. Sorry about that. Just one second. I'll make sure everything's still working fine. Alright, it appears it is. Alright, since I, um, since, uh, the, since I stopped at just the beginning of the scene, I'm just gonna go back to the start for a fresh start. Okay, so here we go again. The gentle early on breeze, um, blew past the ears of wheat, uh, um, from time to time. Framed against the setting sun. It was a majestic sight, yet silent as a tomb. Mitsuru Shirosaki beheld that sh scene through his glasses. He felt his body slowly but surely creeping toward death's door. He'd been shot in the back by so many arrows, yet he shockingly stopped even caring about that. The only thing he could feel clearly was Hasane's warmth as she walked by him and helped him stay on his feet. It took a moment for him to realize Hasane was staring at him. What's wrong, Hasane? Mitsuru, are you sure you don't need to treat those wounds? Ah, uh, Yeah, I'm fine. But there's an old clinic back in the village, isn't there? We could find stuff like medicine and bandages if we went there. Thank you, Hatsune, but I'm fine. He knew his body wouldn't make it that far. Rather, he was more concerned by the despondency Hatsune had been exhibiting since the day before. The two players she'd killed and the two Mitsuru had killed were probably beginning to weigh on her conscience. Mitsuru knew well that where Hatsune not forced sorry, Mitsuru knew well that Hatsune was a truly compassionate person, or she not forced to play his twisted game. He knew she was always courteous to her fans, took every job as seriously as the last, loved pudding, and hated spiders. You know, I feel like I'm dreaming. Huh? Well, my family lives in, the ba in a small backstreet work street workshop. My life really was just as drab as my personality and looks. So it still doesn't feel like I can really be walking from an aisle like you, Hasne. Mitsuru, what brought this on? Hasne gave an embarrassed hint of a smile. But it wasn't her normal smile. Hey, Hasne? What made you want to become an idol? Huh? I mean, I already know because I've seen it on your website. Now we're here. I want to hear it straight from you. Is it wrong for me to ask? 
Of course not. Katsune ga idol ni naritai to omotta no wa. Katsune no mama ga Katsune no umareru mai ni genou kai ni ita kara nano desu. I want to become I want to become an idol because my mommy used to be in the show business used to be in show business before she had me. Katsune no mama wa so na ni youmei dewa nakatta desu ga. Sore demo tozu no eizou ya shoshin o mitari suru to sugoku shiyawase sou ni shite tano desu. She wasn't all that famous. She looks so happy in all those videos and pictures I saw of her back then. Her fans were the same too, apparently. She still gets fan letters from time to time. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Isn't it? So I wanted to become an idol loved by her fans, just like my mommy. But what I, what I want to know is why you're still a fan of Hatsune Anto. She's already on the wane, you know. I don't care about any of that. That's why I'm a fan of the idol of Hatsune Chan. Hatsune Chan is himself. It's not the idol Hatsune I'm a fan of. It's of you yourself. Hatsune Chan? Me myself? Yeah, see, the thing is... Yeah, see, the thing is... All of a sudden, Mitsuru knows someone through the wheat field. Look out, Hatsune! Multiple bullets cracked as they mowed down ears of wheat and surged forth. Mitsuru shielded Hatsune from them all. His fading senses were forcefully awakened by the intense pain, paralyzing his muscles and nerves like he'd been shocked. His knees, his knees gave way, and he fell toward the ground. But he knew if he fell now, he'd likely never be getting up, getting up again. <laughs> Mitsuru gritted his teeth and managed to keep himself on his knees. He was aware he had fallen conscious, so he let his guard down for even a moment. All of a sudden, he felt something warm. He looked down to see Hatsune pressing her hands against the blood flowing out of his chest and stomach, trying to stop the bleeding. Hatsune, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You protected me, so I'm not hurt. But you're you're losing so much blood. It's okay, Hatsune. All that matters is you're all right. Mitsuru tried to gently brush away Hatsune's tears. But just then, you could hear Skasa and the maid talking through the wheat field. Shall I finish him off, Master Skasa? No, wait. We shouldn't get any closer to them. Why? A moment later, Mitsuru finally understood. Of course! Mitsuru sprung into action. Though his brain was frying with agony, he took out his Joker PDA and activated special function. And then he did something he'd sworn never to do. Even if he shot at them, it wouldn't work on the maid. And even if he tried to run away, it'd be easy pickings for Skasa. So... If that's what they were afraid of... 
And if Mitsuru was already gonna die either way, then he'd... Mitsuru, what do you think you're doing? No, you're not thinking of dying, are you? Sorry, Hasune. But yes. Oh, I wish we could have been together to the very end. No! I don't want to lose you! Please don't cry anymore, Hasune. Isn't your smile supposed to be one of your cue points? <laughs> Mitsuru! Just stop, Mitsuru! That's not me anymore! I'm just a murderer! So you don't have to go so far from me! I never managed to make her smile in the end. Hatsune chan. Bye bye. Bye, Hatsune. Mitsuru got up and ran to the wheat field. He gripped his PDA. And charged straight at Skasa and the maid, staring him bewildered with shock. <laughs> Skasa pulled his trigger. The bullets pierced Mitsu one after another. But all sound and pain had faded from Mitsu's world by this point. Hey, Hatsune. I know I didn't get the chance to tell you. But you once saved my life. It was the year you finally made your debut. Back then, I was convinced I was totally worthless to the world. I hated how weak and pathetic I was, and seriously considered erasing myself from the world. But then I happened to see you on TV. There you were. This girl only one year younger than me, singing your heart out. Honestly, the song wasn't all that good. But your smile and voice touched my heart. If there's anything I can say for sure, it's that they gave me the strength to want to try a little harder, like you. After that, I studied like I never had before, found lots of things I liked and kept living on even when people kept making fun of my appearance and hobbies. That's why I've cheered you on for so long. Because it's not the idol Hatsune Ando I like, but the girl who always tries her hardest. And that's why... 
ハツネちゃんのためなら死ねるんだ。I can die for you. <laughs> 14 meters, 13 meters, 12 meters, 11 meters. Scusa Mitsubayashi knew he'd already hit Mitsuru with as many bolts as needed to kill someone. And yet. Mitsuru kept charging toward him like a feral beast, soaked with blood. The M93. Sorry, the M93R ran out of ammo, and the recoil suddenly stopped. But even after spending all that firepower, Mitsuru's march remained undaunted. No! <laughs> At first, Skull said Flaw was an act of unfettered desperation. Next, he thought Mitsu was putting his life on the line so Hatsune could get away. But neither explained why he wasn't using his gun. Could it be? When it finally hit him, Skull said tossed his M93R aside and took out his PDA. He already turned on a special function ahead of time in the off chance he'd need it. Eight meters, seven meters, six meters. The screen showed all the usable special functions in range, not including Kitomi's. Detonate a designated call of a player within two meters. Show list of all player encounters. Nullify the special function of all PDAs within 10 meters. Display the player number in clear condition of a player within 10 meters. When a player dies within 1 meter of this PDA, all player callers, with the exception of this PDA's player, within 5 meters will detonate. Render another PDA within 1 meter inoperable. Are those from Hatsune's PDA? And that meant Mitsuru Shiosaki's current special function was... Skasa felt shivers down his spine. Mitsuru's roar had stopped at some point. Yet he still charged forward. Four meters. Three meters. Two meters. Get away from Master Skasa! Tomi raised her chainsaw. Ready to cut down Mitsuru. That would end his life in an instant. Mitsuru faintly smiled at that moment. When the player with it dies in one meter of this PDA, all player callers, with the exception of this PDA's player, within five meters will detonate. That had to be the function Mitsuru had activated. Stop, Hitomi! Don't kill him! What? The dutiful maid stopped in the corners for her master's orders. Scott immediately formulated a counter strategy. It all centered around one of the special functions Mitsuru currently possessed. Nullify the special functions of all PDAs within 10 meters. If I can activate it, then we'll... But Mitsuru's feeble voice echoed in Skasa's ears, disrupting his thoughts. Mitsuru wrapped his arms around Skasa, holding tight. I won't let Hatsune die. He then pitched forward, leaning on Skasa. Mitsuru seized that chance to knock Skasa's PA out of his hand. <laughs> Master Skasa! <laughs> Itomi, stay back! Skasa tried to pull Mitsuru off him and head for Hitomi. 
But we sure only put more weight on him. <laughs> his howl, his side howl was sharp pain. Perhaps he reopened his wounds. But that didn't matter right now. Sure would die before Scott's could reach his PDA. So I need to hurry. I have to guess as far away from Hitomi while there's still time. Two meters. Three meters. Four meters. Just then, Scott felt Mitsuru's grip weaken. I I've won. <laughs> I won't let it happen. Oops. I won't let Hitomi die in a place like this. Not when she still hasn't lived yet. Scusser roared, mustered his strength as he straddled several steps back. And in that instant that seemed to last an eternity, Mitsuru collapsed, still clinging to Skasa. Mitsuru had died, right next to Skasa. And as Skasa heard the sound that proclaimed Mitsuru's passing, his own collar started flashing red. <laughs> Skasa hastily looked to Hitomi. Her collar wasn't flashing. <laughs> oh, thank God. I made it in time. <laughs> That's all that matters. An autumn gust breathes through the wheat field. Master Skasa? Skasa-sama? No! Master Skasa! No! I'm sorry, Hitomi. I know I just promised you that I'd always be your master. Looks like I really wasn't cut out for the part after all. No! No! That is not true! So... So please! It's too late, Hitomi. You know there's nothing more we can do at this point. No! No, Master Skasa! <laughs> You know, I never thought you had a selfish side. Though I suppose I'm just as guilty. So before I go, Hitomi, let me give you one last order. Hitomi, you have to keep winning this game. And you need to live on until your real master arrives to save you. No! I am your maid, and you are my master, Master Skasa! So please, please don't leave me alone! Sorry, Hitomi. I'm so sorry. Skasa didn't know what to do aside from protecting Hitomi. Perhaps ordering her to live on in this atrocious world was the last thing she wanted. But Skasa didn't want her to die. So he called her attention one last time. <laughs> Listen, Hitomi, you must follow my order. 
Just then, Scasa heard the beep that marked the end of his time limit, and his collar deadening with a deafening roar. When Hatsune Toda reached that place, she found Skasa lying immobile on the ground, and the chainsaw-wielding maid standing there. Itsuru was lying at the maid's feet. He was lying dead with Skasa in the pool of blood, his body battered and riddled with bullets. <laughs> I thought I had finally found my ideal master for sure this time. But now, Master Skasa has gone and left me, just like the rest of them. Just when will I finally... All of a sudden, the maid looked at Hatsune. With a feeble voice of understanding, she addressed her. Oh, you were the killer queen, were you not? I see. So that is why he... The maid's gaze unsteadily shifted to Mitsuru's corpse. She gave a mysteriously sad smile she talked to herself again. He was the queen's attendant, was he not? That is why he became so desperate. Tell me, Queen, could we put a stop to this fight if at all possible? Huh? Master Skasa's final order was for me to keep living on. Therefore, Look in the maid's downcast eyes seems sincere. The wind blew again, sending a vermilion wave across the wheat field. Hatsune was genuinely touched by that beautiful sight. Right then, she heard the sound crack of a clapperboard in her head. All right. Truly? Yeah, for real. I'm sick of all this killing by now. Honestly, I didn't want to fight anyone anymore. I didn't want to let Mitsuru die. Suddenly, tears trail down Hasane's cheeks. Praying from the bottom of her heart, those tears were genuine. She took out her PDA and turned the screen toward the maid. <laughs> This is my clear condition. I think it should be compatible with yours. That is, my sincerest apologies, but I cannot see it. It has caught the sun on my eyes. Huh? Really? And can you get a little closer? Alright, I understand. 
The maid nodded and walked slowly toward Hatsune. Just a little further. Hatsune softly touched the PDA's operation button. Naturally, it wasn't her clear condition that was showing on the screen. It was the words, Designate a designated caller of a player within two meters. Mariko's special function. Hasune didn't know who killed Mariko or where. But Hasune wouldn't hesitate to use it, and then ensuring Mitsuru's sacrifice didn't go to waste. Once she killed the maid, there only be four left to go. Hasune had deduced that from the number of special functions she'd acquired. One more step, and the maid would be within two meters of her. <laughs> Tomi stopped as she frowned in puzzlement. But Hasane calmly took a step forward and tapped her PDA. She moved the cursor on the screen to match out Hitomi's player number, two. I moved to push the button. But the maid kicked off the ground before she could. Huh? The maid disappeared from Hasane's line of sight before she could process what had happened. The two disappeared from Hasane's screen, too. A moment later, she heard the humming of a motor coming to life. Truly a shame. Your waterworks show nearly had me fooled. <laughs> By the time Hasne turned toward those sounds, the maid was already holding her chainsaw like an unsheathed sword, her hand tied around the throttle leather. The blade starts to revolve and the maid closed the gap between her and Hasane in one swift motion. All Hasane could do was gasp in surprise. A fierce burning ran from her side to her shoulder. It was enough to knock all the strength out of her. Hasane could hear the maid's voice as she collapsed. That was a mite too close for comfort. I see your title is well earned, Killer Queen. I'm impressed you nearly killed me of all people. My sincerest apologies, Master Skasa. But I shall never let my guard down again. I shall slay the remaining four players by myself to atone. <laughs> Will that please you? It sounded like the maid was talking to the dead Skasa. It seems she already put her lay's victim out of her mind. Oh, now that I think of it, some of those players had clear conditions related to other PDAs, did they not? Then I shall take them with me, along with their memory chips. It would probably be best to destroy their weapons. The maid snatched Hasane's PDA out of her hand. Who were the players she was talking about? It seemed the maid had once had an opportunity to overhear their conditions. But once Hasane realized her thoughts were meaningless, she ceased any further contemplation on the subject. Shortly after, she heard a few more sounds. 
Come along with me, Master Skasa. Good day to you, Queen. And with those last words, the maid walked away. I'm dying. But Hasne didn't want to just wait for that moment to arrive. <laughs> she didn't want to die alone. That lone desire drove her to crawl, crawl over toward me too. And just as she was a hand to reach away from him. A vivid memory of a distant day replayed in Hasne's mind. It was her first handshake event after she made her debut. The boy at the front of the line hastily wiped the sweat off his hand and though he was clearly starstruck and shedding tears of gratitude, he still reached out his hand. Hasne could still remember the warmth of his hand. Even when work got tough, remembering that moment would give Hasne the motivation to try her hardest in the world of show business. And now, she could clearly remember the face of that boy nearly the same age as her. Good luck, Hatsune. No matter what happens, I'll be your fan for the rest of my life. I remember now. That fan. It was you, Mitsuru. Soon, a dazzling light shone on Hasune. Was she at a gig? Many spotlights were pointing right at her. When she looked at the audience, a sea of smiles greeted her back. Hasune searched for him amongst them. Just then, she heard a conspicuously loud voice calling to her from the front row. Hatsune! Hatsune! Good luck, Hatsune! Hatsune! And when she looked, she saw that boy in glasses standing there, wearing her official fan club's jacket. Okay, I'm gonna take a bit of a bathroom break. I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back now. Alright then, um... Let's continue. The moon shone down on the earth with dazzling pale light. Though it was night, the shadows of the trees were clear, and whenever the wind blew, Yui, perhaps mistaking them for human shadows, grabbed his arm. But Akinori Majima never considered complaining about it. If Kurokawa's deathless function was accurate, then five players had lost their lives on this day alone. Only five survivors are left. Just then, Kurokawa, who was taking coin alongside Ray, suddenly knows something stopped in his tracks. Oh, are we here? The forest suddenly cleared up, revealing a wheat field. Majima quickly surveyed his surroundings. No one else was there from what he could tell, but still. Hey, Ray, how's it look? There's probably no one here. Probably? Yes, we're almost certainly safe. Almost certainly? The hell's that shit about? Just say yes or no, dumbass. You got a thing for that phrase or something? There's no such thing as absolute certainties in this world. I hate lies. You're a pesky asshole. I am not an asshole. I am a respectable lady. You'll need to pepper every word you say, every sentence you say of a swear, you know, Kurokawa. You bit. Uh, just shut up. Majima couldn't help but envy those two for having the guts to exchange back talk in their current straits. Yui shot him a worried glance. Majima san? Uh, Don't worry, I'm fine. Though in what possible sense he had no idea. The fact that three people had died here meant they'd already finished confirming Kurokawa's special function. Come on, guys, let's move it. Oh. Right. At Kurokawa's urging, the crew proceeded onwards. Before long, they found three bodies. One was a boy whose collar had detonated, and the other two were a boy and girl who died holding hands. <laughs> It was quite evident there had been a fierce battle in this place. Yui was holding onto Majima with shaky hands, but even Majima wasn't sure he wasn't shaking himself. Kurokawa, which one's the owner of the Joker? Huh? Oh. The glasses guy, a bit of the girl. I see. Ray brought her hands together for a brief prayer and began searching the body. Still, who would have thought Mitsuru would have died some chick? I sure as shit don't know what happened. <laughs> Look at him. Maybe he actually got his cherry pop before he died. 
You're so cruel! How can you laugh when one of your friends is dead? Huh? The fuck? Friends? He's shitting me right now? This guy was my slave. Then he made a break for it, only bite here. Right out with the ch with some chick he hit it off with. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. How is that hilarious? Everyone's been fighting for their lives to survive some game we were all forced to play. Even you're one of its victims, aren't you? The hell? Did you just call me a fucking victim? Uh, are you saying you aren't? Listen up, bitch. We're gonna be here all the fucking day if we try Sir, who's a victim and who's an aggressor. You think the real world's all sunshine, 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 rainbows and shit? Peel off its layers, and you'll find it's just as raw as shitholes this game. You can bitch and moan all you like, but what's the difference? Well. Does that mean you accept this game? The fuck? You too, Majima? It ain't about accepting their shit. We're already in the damn game right now. Let me tell you something, Majima. The reason we're stuck playing this game is because we didn't have power. And the bastards run this game? They're the ones with power. Ain't that the truth of it? If you hate this game, then you gotta survive it and waste the fuckers pulling the strings. The fuck you so surprised about? See? Shit like this is why you're such a chicken shit. Nothing more than a pussy who gives guns to chicks. What was that? Triggered by Kurokawa's insults, Majima's shoulders tensed up. But Yui was currently carrying their gun. And his trusty right fist was broken. <laughs> Would it really be for the best if I took a gun? But just as the thought crossed Majima. Don't, Majima. Majima-san. <laughs> You were looking at my gun just now, weren't you? But I will never hand it over to you. It's okay. I know. I know you're not the kind of person who needs a weapon like this. <laughs> Everything Yui said was as logical as always. And to be honest, Majima barely understood any of it. Yet her words never failed to guide his heart back to its foundation. Ah, so Yeah, you're right. Just as you said. 
Yes, that's what I thought. The hell's with you guys? Fine. Guess there's no cure for stupidity. Is that jealousy I sense there, Kurokawa? The hell? Shut up, dumbass. Look, forget that. Did you get the Joker PDA? No, not yet. Then look for it already. I did, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I checked the other two, but they didn't have PDAs or memory chips either. What? Is this true, Ray? Don't give me that almost certainly crap this time. I am absolutely, positively, almost certainly sure. Hey, that ain't positive either. Then you can look for them. I'll bet the microscopic chance I was wrong on it. The fuck? Ain't this your clear condition we're talking about here? My clear condition is also yours. Now, now, settle down, you guys. What do you think, Majima? Hmm. Nine players have already died, leaving just five of us. Meaning there's one more player still out there. Then you think they took them? Yeah, I say that's very likely. Wait, does that mean it's already too late to fulfill Kurokawa's clear condition? The fuck? Why is that? Think it over, if you will. If that player's clear condition is incompatible with any of ours, then you can't have four people fulfilling their conditions at the same time. Which means it's checkmate for you. Dumb shit. If that were true, then my collar would have blown the kingdom fucking come a long time ago, wouldn't it? Well, that's true. Either way, the odds don't look very good. Can't argue with that. Quite. Huh? Why's that? But before Majima could answer. Whoa, that scared me! What the hell? What's that sound? Is that our PDAs? The whole group's PDAs were beeping. They all took them out and checked their screens. When they did, they discovered they received an email. An email. Is it from the managers? Could be. Everyone checked the emails they received. I shall be waiting in the village plaza at 1 a.m. tonight. I have brought six PDAs and ten memory chips, so I firmly believe it is in your best interests. This is... Oh wow, this is great! See? Let's even get the PDAs and memory chips we need! Is that really how we're supposed to interpret it? 
なわけあるかよこの文面見てわかんねえのかこいつはあのメイドからだぞ Of course fucking not The maid sent this Can't tell just by reading And then With near perfect timing Huh? Another one? <gasps> Majima didn't like this one bit. But he had no choice but to check the email. P.S. Should you fail to arrive, I shall destroy the PDAs and memory chips. I eagerly await your visit. You see? He's using them as bait to lure us in. But... But... Our clear conditions should be compatible, shouldn't they? Fuck if I know what that maid's thinking. I agree with Kurokawa's sentiments. The workings of that maid's mind are clearly not on any level we can hope to comprehend. You know what this means, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I know. The three immediately looked off into different directions. They could hear the faint sound of some retreating through the forest. Is she already gone? Yes, it would appear so. See? This is why you're almost certainly shit doesn't mean a damn. Huh? Wait, you mean she was nearby? Yeah. But why? Why didn't she attack us? Left bewildered by the maid's incomprehensible logic and actions, Majima broke out into unpleasant sweat all over. Before long, midnight arrived. All the survivors received a message informing them there are only 24 hours left in the game. And a minute later, The center of the game field was raised with hellfire. Day 6 30 minutes had passed since the managers had sent the 24 hour time limit notification. Holy shit. I'm not sticking it way too far. Masaki Kurokawa, standing at a point game a perfect view of the village, gazed at the spectacle before him. The roaring fiery, fiery maelstrom spread, gradually consuming the village the group was about to head for. It was probably that maid's doing. But Kurokawa didn't even bother considering her reasons. He knew he never had a chance of understanding someone with as many screws loose as them. Even if he did, it wouldn't put out the fire or set the maid straight. Honestly, I never wanted to get mixed up with someone as nuts as that. Fucking hell. Seriously, the fuck's up with this game? First I got the crap beat out of me by that bastard Majima. Then some crazy bitch nearly blew up my collar. Then Mitsuru thought he had the balls to backstab me. 
And then Ray came throwing me around like it's no one's business. Just when I thought I had Majima dead the rights, that chick threatened me with a goddamn submachine gun. To make it all worse, I didn't find another gun after. Next thing I know, I can't even kill that fucker Majima anymore. And to top it all off, we gotta catch that maid from hell without killing her? I don't know if it's the managers or some other bastards, but they've got balls saying they can make me not just their slave, but their toy, too. God fucking damn it! I won't kill all you fuckers right now, you hear me? Kurokawa's rage exploded. He let out an indignant roar. Even he was aware it was nothing more than the grumblings of a loser. Despite that, he had to show his indignation to the people watching through the cameras. Just then, Ray came from the forest behind, frowning. Silence, Kurokawa. What do you have to throw a fit about? Mind your own business. Anyway, are they done yet? How long are those two going to keep us waiting? Saying that won't make a difference. Their gun requires four more bullets than yours. They need to get their and they need to get changed too. So they should move their asses. Besides, why the hell are you always taking their side? Ain't I the one who gave you all that food and water? Kurokawa, I am not some stray cat. Then why? Because... I suppose I came to see they possess a strength, I don't. What? You still hung up on that crap? I admit that May could waste us if it weren't for that bimbo. That's only because she had the power of the submachine gun. That ain't strength, that's power. Ain't that how your values are supposed to work? I must admit, I'm surprised. And here I thought you. And here I was convinced you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Shut up. However, I suppose I am bitter. Huh? Sorry, I meant, um, however, I, you're, however, that's not quite right. You're so wrong about something. Huh? What? Strength isn't limited to one shape. It comes in all different varieties. Yui is very strong from a certain perspective. Probably stronger than either of us. Even your hated rival Majima is beginning to realize his own strength. What of you, Kurokawa? Do you know the form of your own strength? Like I care, dumbass. I figured you'd say that. 
But that part of you is tied to your very own brand of strength. And I didn't have the kind of strength you do. That's why I was able to remember. Huh? After that maid bested me, he told me to get my hands on some power. However, I believed power and strength to be different back then, so I couldn't listen to what you were telling me. But when I found the sword, I finally remembered. The essence of the Makioka style swordsmanship is not getting stronger or gaining power. It's learning the strength to wield power. And without that power we call a sword, my strength could not come into form. You sure do yammer about a bunch of crap. Your brain ain't where you excel. So it'll just confuse yourself if you try getting all philosophical and shit. You're right. I need to learn a little from your simplicity. Though it wouldn't do me any good to take too much influence and end up a gorilla like you. The fuck you say? Fucking hell, I still can't stand you. Really? I've taken quite a liking to you myself, though you are quite twisted. Am I a faucet? Well, whatever the case, this crappy relationship of ours only lasts another 24 hours. Very true. But your collar might explode sooner than that. Whoa, hold the fuck on. Don't tell me you're planning on killing that maid. That's... You ain't gonna give that almost certainly spiel again now, are you? Ugh, you figure it out? Just then, Majima and Yui joined them. Kurokawa didn't press Rei any further and headed for the burning village with the rest of the group. They could feel the heat baking their skin even before they reached it. What they found were waves of heat that scorched the sky in violently swaying orange flames. A world ruled by violence that would return all to ash. The maid, standing in the center of it all, faced the group and bowed gracefully. I thank each and every one of you for coming. You have my heartfelt gratitude. It's just the one that put us through hell. Why would you set a fire? Why? Is Master Skusa's ceremonial bonfire? Ceremonial bonfire? Hey, don't waste your breath, dumbasses. That maid's all kinds of fucked up in the head. A single glance was all it took for Kurokawa to smell death on the maid. He truly believed her to be dangerous. Just then, the girl hiding behind Majima stepped forward, her face scrunched in resolve. Um, PDA 
We came to pick up the PDAs and memory chips. Why, yes. You're welcome to them if you defeat me. Um, what's your clear condition? If it turns out to be compatible with ours, can't we stop this fight? I humbly refuse. But why? There are four of us, you know. You're a big disadvantage, aren't you? Oh no, I am not alone. Master Skasa is with me. What are you talking about? Anyone can tell it's just one of you. Didn't you hear me, chick? Quit wasting your breath. But... Shut up, you klutz. That made some plan to kill us from the start. Yui, your sincerity in trying to negotiate with that maid is highly commendable. But this world here is only for those with power. There's nothing the powerless can do here. Well, what do you know, Ray? Looks like you finally get it, eh? Kurokawa, please stop equating humans to barbarians. I'm a moral human as straight as an arrow. Fucking liar. Like you're one to talk after your eyes lit up like a goddamn firework once you got your hands on that sword. Majima, please stop them. Ogihara, I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm not that powerful. That's right, Majima. Without a weapon, you're the weakest one of our bunch. Now don't you go forgetting that. Yes, I know. No! I told you to shut up! If you're gonna bitch the whole time, back the fuck off! And don't you go firing that thing even by accident. If you waste that maid, this will all be for nothing. Now then, we do not have much time. Shall we begin the Requiem? Your death throw shall be my offering to Master Skasa. The maid quickly strained herself. Every last one of her actions were perfectly poised, like a theatrical performance. She's fucking lost it. Listen up, you bastards! Don't you go getting yourselves killed! Mine now. I never expected to hear such consideration from you. Dumbass. It's for my clear condition. Now let's do this shit! And with that... And with that gunshot, the fires of war began.
Kurokawa pulled the trigger on his Cull Python and fired two shots at the maid. Akinori Majima charged with Rei at that sound, almost like it was a sorry gun in an athletic meet. The maid gave a bewitching smile as the hem of her skirt waved. A moment later, she revealed the ground beneath her and kicked off two clouds of dirt. Majima let out an unbridled war cry as the maid easily perceived the false trajectories. Ray was running alongside him. For some reason, the maid didn't have her chainsaw. Yet Majima didn't have time to consider why. Fight alongside me, Master Skasa! The maid beamed and danced in a circle. And when she finished spinning, there was a pistol in her hand. It was the handgun the boy who accompanied her. Uh, what? <laughs> Everyone's blood went cold at the unexpected turn of events. <laughs> Scatter you dumbasses! Majima and Rei jumped in opposite directions. But right after... The maid's gun fired with a roar, and a moment later, Majima's right leg scorched with pain. You shall be first, then. The maid smiled and pointed her gun to paralyze Majima. But a bell from the rear interrupted her. You bitch! Oh my. The maid swiftly jumped back diagonally three meters. Kurokawa's bullets smoked down the air. Majima! Ray! Hurry! Hide behind those buildings! He recalled out. The scorpion at the ready. But the maid suddenly disappeared behind the building. An enraptured voice soon followed. Brighter! Blaze brighter! Every last one of you! Please, keep struggling on and on and on! Are you watching, Master Skasa? Soon I shall have their flesh, blood, and souls burning red! <laughs> Everyone's joints creaked with fear. The maid was beyond any level of Majima's comprehension. Majima, stop hesitating! By the time that shout brought Majima to his senses, Ray was already hiding behind the building. Majima shivered with cold sweat as he darted behind the building opposite of Ray. Just then, footsteps approached him from behind. Yui had rushed over to him, her scorpion still hanging from her neck. Curl Call went for Ray, and I went for you. Are you crazy? I don't have any weapons to protect you with. But I was wanted to decide not to give you a gun. And besides, we've always been partners, haven't we? You came for a foolish reason like that? There was a lot more he wanted to say. But before he could... 
Hey Majima, she's heading your way! Majima heeded Kurokawa's warning and peeked out from behind the building. But the maid was nowhere to be found. Not there, Majima! She's in the building! In the building? Confused, Majima turned around. All of a sudden, the wall of the building was blown away from the inside. Chips of wood and sparks scatters the maid kicked down the weakened wall. Right after the maid pointing her gun at Yui. Majima charged right at her, guarding his head with his arms. Just as he hoped, the maid smiled. Oh my, are you hungry? Majima took a bullet to his abdomen, and his intestines convulsed with powering pain. But the bullet was stopped by the bulletproof vest he borrowed from Yui. Majima stood firm in face of the maid's bullets. He hit her right in the right cheek with a ferocious straight right. His broken fist howled with pain, but he swung his right arm all the same. Feel the bones in his fist crushing all the way to his shoulder. But though he launched that attack with his life on the line, he only succeeded in knocking the maid back a step or two. <laughs> what? <laughs> I must say, I definitely felt that one. The maid smiled. Countered with a middle kick that ruptured Majima's side. That impact, far succeeding the bullet from earlier, sent Majima flying. Majima fell to his knees, his vision gone white for a moment. When he looked up, he saw the maze cold glare. Ray slashed for a sword at that moment. But the maid dodged, and the blade only ripped through the hem of her clothes. It was almost like she totally predicts Ray's attack. <laughs> what? The maid pulled her trigger of a smile, and Ray immediately jumps to the side. But several of the bullets hit her small body. <laughs> Oh my, you need to put a better fight than that. Damn, it. Damn you! Oh yes, you had another companion, did you not? The maid turned around and pulled her trigger. Kurokawa had darted out from the building, but the bullets pierced his side and knocked the cold python right out of his hand. Are you fucking shitting me? Ray, Kurokawa, and Majima had all been reduced to the knees. Only Yui was left standing, the blood drained from her face. The maid smiled and pointed the right gun at the maid smiled gently, pointing the gun right at her. Oh? Dear me. I am out of bullets. The maid froze upon realizing her gun slide was still fixed in place. 
Jin held to her chest affectionately and smiled warmly. Thank you for your hard work, Master Skasa. I can handle the rest by myself. Please, rest in peace. The maid's words made no sense to Majima. She then bowed to her opponents. Well now, feel free to chat for a minute. And with those words, the maid walked off somewhere. Seeing his chance, Majima tried to get up. But the pain was too great for him to stand. He probably broke in several ribs. A glance saw him that Ray was in sim similar condition. <laughs> You're so fucking pathetic, all of you. Prokhal was staggered over to the two of them. Ray gave him a feeble smile. You can still move after getting shot in the side? You really are a gorilla, Kurokawa. Shut up. Anyway, the hell that bitch go? Probably too. And then, he's set to finish Majima's sentence for him. He heard the familiar howl of an engine over the roaring flames. So she's bringing out the big guns. If only she brought that out from the start, maybe it could have done a bit more damage. The first time Majima could remember, Kurokawa actually sounded vulnerable. What do we do, Kurokawa? Retreat while we can. Don't be a dumbass. The hell did that accomplish? She'll just break those PDAs and memory chips. It'll be game over for all of us, yeah? No, just the two of us. Ray's clear condition calls for the destruction of the Joker, so she can win without even doing anything. Meanwhile, Ogihara needs to destroy 16 memory chips. They've already given her all the necessary chips. What? When the hell did you do that? Sorry, but I don't exactly trust you. He slipped them to Yui while they've been looking for weapons. <laughs> you chiller son of a bitch. If he knew that, he should have told me from the start. <laughs> Even if you weren't in this kind of situation, you have never agreed to it. Damn it. You're the same perceptive bastard as always. Kurokawa turned his attention to Rei and Yui. Rei was panting with pain, while Yui's trembling from head to toe with fear. Easy. That's right. 
Go, Ray. Yes. You get going too, Ogihara. No, I cannot allow you to leave. Did you think I would just let them go? <laughs> that bitch has got some serious super hearing. Go, both of you. Kurokawa and I will buy you time. Majima ground his teeth and stood up in spite of the pain. Kurokawa and I are sturdy enough to... Kurokawa interrupted Majima's train of thought like he seen right through him. Oi, oi, Majima-san yo! Hold your horses, Majima. You ain't think of dying now, are you? Then... I ain't going along with you. What? Dumb shit. I ain't giving up that easy. So show some fucking spine, or I'll waste you before that bitch can. Kurokawa glared at Majima. Majima was honestly impressed with Kurokawa's resolve. The engine howled louder if each step the maid took. They knew their chance of winning were next to none. Majima decided not to think about that. Let's go, Kurokawa. Shut up! Don't order me around, you bastard! Gracious me, you still resist knowing you stand no chance. However, it makes for such a good show! The maid smiled happily, pointing her chainsaw on Majima and charged toward him. To do his injured leg, Majima couldn't rely on his footwork. And with his right hand open, he could only use his weaker left. How much good will the duel in the end? Kurokawa smirked wryly. Perhaps he was thinking the same thing. After all, he'd lost his gun. Majima gave him a wry smile of his own, and... I can fight too! I can fight too! <laughs> the hail of bullets fired from Yui Scorpion sent clouds of dust soaring between Majima and the maid, stopping the maid in her tracks. And with the maids now stopped and open, Ray cut across the clouds of dust with her sword in hand. Kurokawa, it'll be a hundred years before a weakling like you can protect me. Hey Majima, get your head in the game! Right. Majima nodded and clenched his fist. And despite his injured leg, he charged right alongside Kurokawa. We can do this! At that moment, Majima saw the Ford and the Fiend the Maid together in his mind's eye. But the maid screams those shatter the image. <laughs> With a fierce slash of her own, she parried Ray's sword. You want 
Then she threw the chainsaw right into Kurokawa. What? When he came to his senses, Majima realized the maid had closed the gap between them and thrust her knee deep into his abdomen. Majima's legs lost their strength as all the air flooded out of his lungs. <coughs> it all happened in the blink of an eye. In just a few seconds, the three of them were on their knees all over again. The maid was reaching for a discarded chainsaw. Is this the end? That future pained over Majima's mind with despair amidst his agony. But right then... No, please stop it already! Everyone's eyes turned to you as you stood as she held still in the unarmed maid's way. Even the maid stared at her befallment. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think you are doing? <laughs> Why are you not raising your weapon? Because... Because this is wrong! Huh? I beg your pardon. This whole thing is just wrong! Why do we all have to kill each other? Because that is the kind of game this is. Which is why I'm saying that it's wrong. Everyone hurts when they get hit, don't they? No one wants to die, do they? Whatever are you saying? The fuck are you doing, dumbass? Waste her! Stop, Ogihara. Get away from her. No! I hate this! I don't want to see anyone else get hurt, no matter the reason. So please, I'm begging you, please stop fighting! Yui's tearful pleas echo through the burning village. All of a sudden, the maid changed. The light in her eyes flickered out. Now I understand. So you are denying this battle, are you? Yeah, I don't want to fight anymore. I see. Then you understand? The maid's shoulders trembled at Yui's question. Her emotionless eyes were filling with light. But it was an atrocious light, like the flames burning around her. You shall pay. What? You shall pay for this. Your words, your 